you will sell your product. And you'll sell it more effectively if your ad is FM. Facing matter where the ad is persuasively complemented by fashion editorial increases the price per page by about £2,000. You can see the loadings for yourself. Vogue goes up to 13,300 from just over 11 grand. Now, when we get into the real Rolls-Royce positions, OBCs, outside back, you're getting into big, big rates. Because what you've got to remember is, 12 issues in a year, there's only 12 outside backs. There are a lot of FM sites. You want outside backs, there is very limited availability. Limited availability increases the base price for negotiation. Cosmopolitan, £14,400 compared to 92 for ROP, so it's a six grand loading. So every page has its price. Isabella Gianni makes the cover, but she's not just a pretty face. She's a marketing opportunity. Makeup by Dior, clothes by Dior. Even, we're told, wearing Dune by Dior, if you could smell it. And coincidentally, OBC, outside back cover, the most expensive page in the magazine is Dune. By Dior. <laughs> Top fashion editors are versatile creatures. In and out of the office, it's work, 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 even when it's play, play, play. Media stars in their own right, they're always on. The fashion industry knows how to party. It thrives on celebration. But party girls like these are also diplomats, fashion gurus, market assessors, shrewd business operators in a deadly serious world. What comes across to the reader as intuitive reflections of the seasonal zeitgeist is in reality a calculated part in a well-oiled, multi-billion dollar marketing collusion. Absolutely, absolutely. We have a very um, close relationship with the retailers and I will make a point every season of, of talking to the, to the top fashion directors and the presidents who all come over for the shows and we have over, I think it's a thousand retailers that will come into the Vogue room and we make a presentation. Well, there's one thing a woman's going to buy this season, I think it's going to be tartan. And I think what's different this season and what's new this season... And I, I think, think Vogue has a great fashion eye with Mrs. Winter. They're on the cutting edge. They give a lot of information to people about what's happening in fashion. And they're a believable publication. And our customers read Vogue a lot. We did some surveys. We also advertise in Vogue, so we get our point of view across in Vogue. Um, and to have Mrs. Winter, who has a mystique about her, um, appearing only at Bloomingdale's on multi-video screens, we thought could be great for us. And what's new this season, and I think it's something that a lot of the designers are, are responding to, is that there are no really strong dictates. So you can buy a great over-the-knee tartan boot, or you can buy a little nipped-in tartan jacket by Ralph Lauren, or you can... We're talking about leather, we're talking about wrapped jewelry, we're talking about tartan. They will buy accordingly. For instance, last year, we very much believed in the dress. We did something at the beginning of the year called it was the year of the dress. And as a result, you know, all the stores, you know, across America promoted the dress, and it was the best-selling item throughout America last year. Self-fulfilling fashion prophecies, Vogue's eye view, the power to influence purchasing power. What are you paying for when you walk into a department store? You walk into a boutique and you look at a $3,000 price tag on a, on a jacket. A jacket should not cost $3,000 off the peg. You're paying for Christy Turlington, Linda Evangelista, Naomi Campbell, the photographers who take their pictures, the makeup artists who paint their faces, the hair people who dye their hair. You know, every single bit of this costs. High fashion basked in the consumer-led boom of the 80s, sending skirts up, colors wild, and styles, well. The fashion media fell all over itself, reporting the lives of designer gods, mega models, and superstar customers. It was spend, spend, spend. But now even the wealthy must wake up from the glitzy dreams of the spendthrift 80s and tighten their belts. Across the board, glossy magazine sales are down and advertising budgets have been cut by 40%. Those who live by the big fashion statement may die by them when the cold wind of recession blows. Fashion is the first to feel the chill. Recession means conservatism. Perhaps it's time for the small fashion statement. 
And what safer bet than a classic white shirt for that sober, unostentatious look? Good, and Ralph Lauren will be pleased. Nice, clean white shirt. And so the carefully constructed and selected image bursts upon the public. Out of all the colorful creations on offer from the likes of Lacroix, Chanel, Valentino, and Saint Laurent, by coincidence, contrivance, or commercial caution, promoting the third big fashion story of the season, the white shirt. I love it. It's really great. It's going to be a great cover. As does the cover of the Independent Review, the cover of W, L, Cosmo, as well as countless features in other magazines and dailies, like the Evening Standard with a £19.99 special offer from Marks and Spencers, all featuring white shirt stories. It's clearly a sign of the times. Of course, you can still spend a fortune looking like you haven't. And Vogue will be there to encourage you with a Ralph Lauren shirt on the cover and a double-page Ralph Lauren spread next to the Vogue masthead. Consumption, conspicuous or otherwise, is the bottom line in the fashion industry and encouraging it is the aim of the fashion media. And so we celebrate a hundred years of a successful publishing formula, the seamlessness of advertising and editorial, the sense of a shared purpose in the fashion industry. gossamer this business is based on it's based on tulle and taffeta and silk and a little bit of thread and a great 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 bubble of ego slathered in image that's what fashion is um, you know and what you're seeing when you look at an advertisement or when you read a piece of puff press about these people is you're seeing the machine operating and the machine is, is a very cooperative venture um, on the surface because the designers need the stores, the stores need the designers, they all need the press, the press needs the design. You know, it's this system of mutual need and yet because you're dealing with some of the most fragile egos in the world, um, you know, I mean, who are these people? They are dressmakers who have been made out to be kings and queens who live like kings and queens who our culture, in its infinite wisdom, has bestowed houses and millions of dollars and Porsches and the best meals in the best restaurants and hot and cold running champagne, cocaine, limousines, girls, boys, bisexuals, trisexuals. These people can have whatever they want and they are dressmakers. Yes, but dressmakers who can make us turn to our bulging Western wardrobes and cry out, we have nothing to wear. Dressmakers who know that the clothes we wear are powerful communicators. They speak volumes about us. But they speak in a language we can never quite master, whose tone changes repeatedly with the seasons. And consciously or unconsciously, fashion victim or rebel, couture customer or high street shopper, we will all end up trying to speak in variations of it. The fashion media proclaim that changing tone, Last season, it was jewel-encrusted bustiers, then white shirts. Next season, who knows? But we won't have to wait long to find out. Thousands of journalists, photographers, models, fashion editors, including the new editor of British Vogue, sporting the new longer length, and buyers are about to make the pilgrimage once again to the world's fashion shrines, London, Milan, Paris, New York, to bring back the new commandments of cut and color.